In this video, we'll circle back to an old love of Skahoy, and that is controlling Blackmagic cameras. In fact, that was the very first thing we had in mind when we designed our RCP a few years back. But since then, we have added control for so many other cameras, uh, large and small, PVC cameras, POV cameras, all kinds. But Blackmagic design cameras was like the first love of this company. So in this video we'll circle back to how we control these cameras and the unique thing about Blackmagic cameras is that the control signals are moved over the SDI return feed from an ATEM switcher to the camera or in this case from an RCP directly through the uh, studio fiber converter over to the camera fiber converter and then into the camera. So that's what we'll be looking at in this video. But first let's see what was the options of doing this back in time. So, so far if you wanted to use the studio and camera converter products here, uh, fiber converter products as they're called, you needed an ATEM switcher. The ATEM switcher would output control signals for all your cameras and move it over fiber to uh, the actual camera. So the new thing is that you can take such as the Skahoy RCP and it has an SDI output on the backside here if you order it with the SDI shield option and that will be able to insert the control signals on the SDI that goes into the studio fiber converter, sent it over the fiber over to the camera. Okay, and um, another option we'll be looking at in this video is using the Colorfly instead, which is a surface that has control in a very, very compact form factor over uh, four cameras, or if you use the shift key, up to uh, eight cameras if you configure it like I've done right here with only uh, two levels of shift. Now, the, the main point is control signals does not require a ATEM switcher in the mix. You have the output from the backside of the units sending the control signals directly over to the camera on the return feed. So that's what this application will be about, looking at these two products from Skahoy. So I would like to first zoom down onto, no wait, I would actually like to show you how it's connected. Okay, so let's start there and let's look at the backside. So on the backside of the RCP, you see we did put in an ethernet cable. That is actually bringing power to the, to the unit, but in this case we don't need it, we just need a, a 12 volt power supply to power up the panel. Then we have the SDI output here, which goes into the studio fiber converter, and thereby we insert the signal. So the remaining SDI input would be connected to your switcher system, and that could be Blackmagic's own ATEM switches, or Newtek TriCaster, or a third system, any SDI feed that you would like to end up at the camera um, as, as the return feed coming from the master control room. But we don't need it because even if we don't have it, we'll generate our own sync signal and send the images or the control signals over to the camera. So the studio fiber converter has a SMT fiber here and it ends up over here on the back of the camera. And from the camera fiber converter here, we have two cables going in to the Ursa camera and those cables are input and output. And then the rest is handled by the fiber. So that's the setup we have right here. Now let's look at the output of the camera. So if I'm moving the iris joystick, you can see I'm controlling the iris of uh, the camera. You see in the RCP, we have uh, the iris values shown here. We also have traditionally uh, master black on the ring of the joystick. So as I'm turning this, you, you see this is changing. In fact, the way we typically set up the RCP is that we give you an option to also adjust the master black using the encoder knob sitting right here. So, and you also saw the value was actually changing as I'm moving the absolute position um, uh, potentiometer on the joystick, but alternatively you can use this one and adjust the master black. So that's the main functions of an RCP, the joystick here, the master black here. If you press on the top of the joystick, you short a relay on the backside so you can have um, that routed to, to um, or, so that this could, for instance, influence what you see on the monitor in front of you and uh, so forth. That's uh, basically how we do it on all the implementations involving the RCP. We have auto iris here, we have something called relative, and if we hold down the shift key you can see the master black encoder is changed into a limiter. Let's look at what that is, because these are some of the deeper features you find on Skahoy products, and in this case the limiter simply means what is the range we can move the iris in. It means you, you need to look closely at this display, because as I'm now changing the, um, the high limit from uh, 80 to um, 
90 instead, you can see there's a little um, a little bar on the uh, that there's like a strength indicator on the bottom of the display and there's a little bar that indicates what is the the upper limit so as i'm now moving the joystick all the way you can see it hits that limit and it doesn't go any further unless of course i am i'm moving that limit and then it's it's following along so this is a way to set the max and the minimum values using the limiter function holding down the shift key so up here we put sensor gain and shutter speed. You'll notice the values are well known if you know these cameras. And uh, if I'm pressing this one, it is cycling up. So we programmed it or configured it. So when you hold down the shift key, you can go the opposite way. The same is true for sensor gain. We go down or we go up as we press the, the keys here. Um, if we hold down the shift key, we have color bars, which is a press and hold feature, or we can reset all parameters, which I won't do in this video. And then finally, we decided that these three keys right here will change what you see in the menu at the very top. So if we go to the white black menu, we have eight encoder knobs in two rows that co uh, corrects gain values for uh, luminance, red, green and blue. And you can see, um, I should be able to influence that if um, maybe it's, it's more clear if I, if I move a red parameter. So now you can see I'm, I'm uh, adjusting uh, red gain here. I can adjust uh, blue gain as well. So you will use these to paint your image. And if you want to do this in the, um, uh, the lift, red lift, then you are adjusting it by removing or adding red in the uh, shadows. That is very clear right now on the output, while the lift Y is in fact um, master black. So lift Y, it, it's not clear up here, but down here we labeled it master black, or it could have been pedestal if, that, if you're more familiar with that, but it's actually the same value. So uh, like the sensor gain and shutter speed that we broke down onto these two keys, they are also uh, found along with all the other parameters in the menu structure up here. If we move on to gamma and black, we have um, set it up so you can adjust uh, gamma values again. And in fact, we kept the, the lift values. So for the, the black levels, you have them available in both these menus. And finally, if you go to this menu, you have sensor gain, shutter speed, white balance. Let's move the white balance a little bit. Um, so you can see we can adjust these values up here. We have detail on off, hue, contrast, saturation, focus and focus wouldn't be available because this lens doesn't support it but the lens does support the iris which is why you um, yeah we of course can adjust the iris so that was a walkthrough of the Skahoy RCP in a classic setup with the uh, Blackmagic cameras I would like to move on and show you how the Colorfly can do the same things so you see these two products are um, able to give you access to the same features all by the same software inside. So the way Skahoy controllers is made, we, we develop something called device cores and the device core can talk to a camera like this. So with that device core, it has a number of actions that you can execute when you press buttons or turn knobs. And then we configure it by assigning those actions to the knobs and the faders and the buttons of the controllers, put in labels. So you have displays that clearly tell you what the functions do and so forth. And therefore, the same software work we did is available on both these units. You need to figure out if you are in the market for a one RCP per camera, or if you are looking for a compact single surface with access to multiple cameras, like with the Colorfly. In both cases, they will work with the studio converter. They don't need an ATEM switcher, but will talk directly to the cameras um, and thereby enabling you to use other video switcher systems behind your Blackmagic cameras. What I'll do now is to take the SDI cable from this unit, remove it here and put the unit aside and then we'll look at the color fly and then now we need to observe the output. So we take this one and hook in the cable. So what you'll see is, um, if we just move to the right one here, that we have iris control of the Ursa camera as I'm moving this and maybe we should put in a little effort to clean up the mess we produced over here with the image. So I think iris is probably just fine, but I would like to now go to the um, to the value for, um, we have black, white and gamma. So what you see is different here is that over on the RCP, we had two rows of um, knobs to adjust the camera, while over here on the color fly, we have um, a button that changes these four knobs between them. So, so we actually have six buttons that gives us access to all the same things that we had over here with only three buttons. 
Now, there's one thing I'm looking for right now, and I'm actually not sure if I find it. And um, that is if we have the reset all function mapped to the surface that we had over there, because that would be very useful. I'll tell you one thing, and, and this is also exposing a fact about this. All the things that we have sent over to the Blackmagic camera is only stored in the camera. It's a one-way trip, so we don't know what settings the camera currently has, and it shines through when you're looking at these numbers. Right now, uh, the value for, for lift is in fact not the value that we have on the camera, which is why the reset function that you saw on the menu over here but we didn't touch would be very useful to have on this one. And um, I don't know if we actually hit it somewhere. That's a uh, thing I should have checked before, but now at least we can try to correct the parameters by sending new values over. So, uh, but I would advise that you had a reset all button because when you start up your, your controller, you want to send information to the camera to clear all the parameters. Well, I actually do know one way we can do this, but that is, uh, and that is by using the settings. So uh, I would like to get back to that in a moment, but the settings keep stored values of the camera. So when I press this one, you'll see we reset the camera to the value stored in that settings bank. And uh, we can now go from here with this one. We just need to wait for this one to stop blinking, which is a way you can still uh, revert or um, undo your settings. Um, let me go back to this one. Yeah, so we are now at uh, with camera one here. So, um, and now I have reset the parameters. So now it doesn't make a whole lot of sense that I'm actually doing it. But uh, I could still show you that we have access to uh, lift red parameters, lift green, uh, blue lift and, and so forth if I wanted to go through all these. Okay, the color fly is unique in that you have access to one camera, two cameras, three cameras, four cameras. You can use the shift key and have moving faders, flying faders that will change between the two. So the, in this case the shift key has been set up as a toggle so that you go between these two and then you have numbered keys here to choose between them. You also saw as a feature that was very clearly visible on this one, we have uh, a way to recall presets. And let's assume that I did um, some shading here. Let's get to um, gamma. So let's uh, turn the, the blue up a little bit here. And I wanted to save this so I can press and hold a key. And as it turns green, it means that now I saved these parameters on that settings bank. If I go to um, one, you'll see that I'm reverting to previous parameters. And if I press three, I am going back to these. In fact, the blinking feature is one that if you kind of toggle forth and back here, it is actually reverting to the one that you had just before. So this is a way to, uh, to, to try it out and then say, no, I don't want it. So then you just uh, remove those settings again and go back to whatever the, the previous values were. Um, so that's, that's a little detail about how that is in particularly implemented. The settings are also available on the RCP. I think it's on the upper button uh, on the RCP over here. But as I said before, it's the same software. It's a matter of what gets mapped out onto the, to the buttons. And although these are default configurations, you can always go in and tweak these, remove things that you think the user shouldn't be able to touch and add things that are important to you in the way you like to work with your cameras. Final thing I want to say is Colorfly is coming in a new version and the new version is quite exciting on a particular point which makes it a much more versatile controller. On the new Colorfly, we have a row of buttons down here with displays. So finally, this product is absolutely 100% flexible. It doesn't even have to be camera control that you do on the Colorfly now, because these buttons will uh, carry uh, dynamic labels in the OLED displays to tell you exactly what they do. They could be mapped to anything. They could also be mapped to anything over here, but now it is even more flexible because of the dynamic labeling. Let us just quickly see how it looks when we boot it up so we can have a, a quick look at it. It won't connect to anything, but you'll just see the color fly is booting up like this, testing the faders. We see animation, color animations, and then it is uh, probably looking for an IP address now. It might take a while, 
but we'll see in a moment that we see content in the displays of the new color fly. And there you go, you can see it's already set up with a camera selector. It says camera select one, two, three, up to five. If I hold or, or toggle the shift, you see it goes up to camera number 10 on the buttons uh, down here. So with this in mind that I've just shown you, you can easily imagine how the new color fly will work just as well and even better with your Blackmagic camera control. So it was a big pleasure to finally take a look at Blackmagic camera control again. We've been doing this for ages and we still have very unique solutions. I think we are the only manufacturer that gives you an opportunity to shape them directly using the SDI outputs on our devices. So if you want to know more about our products, the Colorfly here or the RCP or other solutions, then go check out the links that go to our website. Look in the description of the video. Please also consider subscribing to our newsletter or join our webinars. We have webinars uh, on a regular basis where we uh, interact with you, answer your questions uh, right on the spot and demonstrate our technology. Thanks for watching and see you out there in cyberspace.